shit! Our girls? This poor son of a bitch reeks of pussy and gunpowder. Of course it's our girl, 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 girl,
Al. Mitzi, you okay? Never better. I'm too fucked up to know for sure. Direct in a harsh my buzz. So we'll call that okay. Party ain't over, but looks like we're gonna have to have it for a while. To get back to my dorm. I have a test in the morning. So do I. Sex ed final. Kenny, I'm being serious. Don't be an asshole about this, please. You kiss me and shut me down, and I'm the asshole? Well, I'm not the one who wanted to go park. Well, what am I supposed to do with this? I don't care what you do with it, but keep it away from me. Sometimes I really don't get you, Kelly. Look, after finals are over, we can go back to that cute little motel by the beach and you can have your way with me. Yeah, yeah. You said that last time and you spent the entire weekend puking on everything. You shouldn't have gotten me drunk. You got yourself drunk. You didn't need any help from me. Well, I don't remember you having a problem with it at the time. I'm amazed you remember anything at all. <laughs> Was I supposed to get all hot and bothered at the sight of you hurling strawberry daiquiris everywhere and stumbling around the room like a retard? The R word, Kenny. Sorry to bother you, lovebirds, but my girls and I have run into a bit of car trouble. Nice hot rod. Thanks. It's a 1960. I wasn't talking about the car. <sighs> Kenny, let's go. You're not going anywhere. Hey, what is this? What gives? <laughs> you hear that, girls? Romeo here wants to know what gives. He's about to find out the hard way. Who are you? What do you want? You are lucky we came along when we did, honey. Looked like Cassandra over here weren't gonna take no for an answer. That's none of your business. I make it my business. Out of the car, hot lips. Calm down, we'll do what you say. That's for sure. It's our lucky day. I don't understand what's happening. Careful, Missy. That's a nice sweater. Take it off. What? Do you have a hearing problem, Tinkerbell? She said take it off. You have no right. Might makes right. And we've got all the rights now. Hey, that's my purse! Kelly, just do what they say, they've got a gun! Yeah, Kelly, we've got a gun. Choir boy here's a smart fella. Nothing but makeup, tampons, and plastic. <laughs> no green. Mm. Downy fresh. It's Chanel, I don't use downy. It's Chanel. Aren't you a peach? Kenny! Everybody just calm down, please! Stop with the waterworks before you drown yourself. Please, just take the car and go! Look, boy wonder, we take whatever we want, whenever we want. Carolyn, duffel bag. First things first. I'm gonna take lover boy here for a ride. <laughs> this is what you want. Right. What the fuck are you doing? Stop what? She's raping my boyfriend! He was asking for it. Totally killed the mood. I could have seen that coming. Waste point next to here and let's get moving. Didn't even get to take my ride. Oh God, no. Sorry, Slick. You heard the lady. Hey, 
party isn't over, is it? No way. Just a hiccup. But we do need food, fuel, and ammo. There's this place I've heard about on the edge of town where we happen to be headed. <laughs> Not sure if I believe it even exists, but if it does, and it's even half as batshit as I've heard, we're in for some fun. Unfucking believable. Unfucking believable. Look at these camel jockey sons of bitches. Freedom hating, baby killing fuckers. Die, you sons of bitches, you towel Good evening, ladies, and welcome to uh, Wendell's Cafe, the only uh, 24 hour donut, coffee, and convenience shop. This side of the county line. May I suggest the bagels? They're fresh. You can keep the cream puffs, pal. We're here for the firepower. Excuse me, what? The firepower, is that what you said? You're right, Pops. You're trying to purchase firearms. We're only legally allowed to sell ammunition. And I'm not sure I can even sell you that. You look like you're still driving with your learner's permit. Don't let the good looks fool you, Mr. Donut. You've got guns, and we want them. Simple math. You girls don't need guns. Maybe we think we do. Yeah, maybe we're out necking in our car and some robbers roll up on us. We have to be able to protect ourselves. All right, look. Be good little girls and go home. Daddy's probably waiting to read you a bedtime story complete with cookies and milk. Don't count on it. What would girls like you need with a gun anyway? That's none of your concern, Barney. It's a free country with a right to privacy and a right to bear arms. Stein says cash only, and we've got the cash. And we want to buy some guns. For one thing, the name is Wendell, not Barney, ma'am. Your reasoning, taken into consideration, your request fully evaluated, and your answer, out of the question. What do you mean, out of the question? Knock it off, Mitzi. I told you both to let me do the talking. Listen, honey. I'm an independent businessman, an American citizen, a veteran of foreign wars. I pay my goddamn taxes. And I got a sign out front that says I'm the proprietor of this establishment. And I reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. Especially big mouth tramps running around in Hollywood hooker outfits looking for trouble. Hold on a minute, Buster. No, you hold on. I didn't come back from Desert Storm, carrying my buddy home in a cardboard box, to open a 24-hour donut and ammo shop to take lip off pump pores like... You're out of your goddamn depth, and you have now crossed the fucking line! Final warning, Captain Fuckface. We're not leaving until we get what we want. Please. For your information, I've been to Iraq. I spent my youth in the eye of the desert storm. I've survived three IED detonations, improvised explosive devices. So if you think I'm shaking in my boots over here because some little hard body high school dropout with an attitude is pointing a gun at me, you got another thing coming. And let me tell you something else. I didn't bring my buddy's body parts home in a cardboard fucking box! So they shoot! You even heard of Desert Storm? We didn't come here for a history lesson, Full Metal Jack Off. Now drop the shotgun before I drop you. I got the high ground, Missy. Now go on. Get!
ma'am. We got the bastard that killed your baby. He was a Nazi. <laughs> What a mess. It's gotta be them. Our one eyewitness says that the dead guy inside murdered the baby and then the three girls attacked him after that. So. You're not suggesting that these three twats are heroes. Kenneth, we don't even know if these are the same girls. And honestly, probably doing the world a favor. This Wendell cat, he's on several watch lists. Hours? <laughs> he's one bad day's donut receipt away from blowing up a federal building. I'll state my badge on this. Being a robbery turned homicide and the work of our three little angels. 50 to one odds. No back cannon. We ain't heard the last of these Jezebels. We'll get a positive ID soon. Agents, uh, we have security footage. Yep. That's a positive match with the cam footage from a strip club. Same girls, all right. You know what really flips my chitlin switch, McMurphy? The flagrancy of it. How they just prance around like the world owes them fucking everything. Uh, all right, look. I understand they're a little brazen, but not any more than any other criminal gang around here. And I guarantee nobody's gonna miss these victims. Bullshit! Now look, don't blow a fuse cannon. We'll find them. We're gonna find them, fuck them, fry them, and forget them. Figuratively. I need a drink to keep my eyes on the road. We need to keep moving. We can't be far from the border now. Hey, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. How does a drink sound? Peachy. Next shithole we see. Bartender, where's my fucking whiskey, man? Oh fucking time, you back there growing the corn yourself? Fuck you looking at? Keep the change. Yeah, I know there is no change, but keep it anyway. What is this, a fucking fag bar? Where's the pussy action around here? Three tequila shots, por favor. You girls know they don't serve minors here. You her babysitter? It's not like I'm gonna turn you in. <laughs> Things are finally looking up around here. Hey, I wanna talk to you. We're in a rush, Dad. We're just here to refuel and white line it back out of here. You wanna white line it? Well, get out your keys. We can have a private meeting in the bathroom. <laughs> Sounds like a real fun time, but we'll pass. We got off to a bad start. You, uh, you ladies got names? Yeah. Snap, Crackle, and Pop. You're real cute. I would have paid you for a Destiny, you for a Candy, and you for a Lexus. Speak of Lexus, mine's out front. You girls want to go for a ride? Around to where? The emergency room? Or the cemetery? What's that supposed to mean? I know it's cryptic, but you'll figure it out eventually. Fresh baby lamb chops. Moss after a rain. <sighs> Citrus. What? The three flavors of a woman. Uh, bet this guy holds a county record for restraining orders. I like your style, Mouthy. But what goddamn sexy fucking bitch. I don't know how to thank you, so I won't. 
You don't have to thank me. I call like I see it. Women like a man who calls the shot. Do we now? That's right, baby. Lay one on. God damn bitches! I will fuck your ass! Black and blue! I'm gonna fuck you sideways, you dumb cunt! Your attitude. This guy's a constant pain in my ass. He's running off business. Unfortunately, we're pretty bad for business, too. Empty out the register. Hey, hey, it's cool. I just work here. Don't shoot. Don't shoot him. He's cute. Em, get the money. Keep this for yourself. <laughs> Stop. Christmas tits. This is happening right now. It's her favorite band. Our Gainsworth is a living wet dream. <sighs> Girls, remember when we first met and we made a pact that we were gonna take our due hell or high water, no matter what? Yeah, Val. Money, drugs, weapons. It's all penny ante shit. This? This is love. Love is for suckers. <sighs> Bullshit. We gotta find this club, Maldoror. It's at 4400 Lincoln Street. I told you to ditch your phone. This is how they track people. Oh, damn! I told you. Okay, let's go. I'm ready to meet me a rock star. <laughs> Val, your shoulder. It's a mosquito bite. Let's go. Well, you still don't know the identity of the suspects who have set social media ablaze, with some even hailing them as heroes. Girl, they're just like Bonnie and Clyde, but they're all Bonnie, and there's three of them. Sex workers are always being taken advantage of. It's about time they started fighting back. Seems to me whoever got killed deserved it. Police still don't- Looks like we got a face match. 99% probable ID. Val Washington, Mitzi Chandler, Carolyn Hills. We got you bitches now. We got nothing. Those girls are probably already across the border by the time we got finished doing the crime scene. Whose side are you on here, McMurphy? You know whose side I'm on. For Christ's sake, I'm just saying, those girls are pros. And I have a hunch you'll find that in the rap sheet. And ain't no pros gonna sit around waiting to get caught while we mess with procedure. Well, they definitely know what they're doing. I'll give you that. <laughs> I know women like this. Sure, I hope you're right, Dick. I know women like this. Val, this is a bad idea. There's gonna be hundreds of people in there. Hundreds of scurrying roaches when we come in guns blazing. Carolyn. Let's have some firepower. I'm just saying, we've got a shitload of money and drugs. We're set. We're almost to the border. Can we please not fuck this up? Christmas tits. Bard Gainsworth. Do you really think I'm gonna miss this opportunity? When I said we were gonna take whatever we wanted, it wasn't tough talk. I meant it. Carolyn. 
You good? This looks like a party to me. Right. Let us pray. God, grant me the hostility to destroy the things I cannot change, the malice to maim the things I can, and the wisdom to ignore the difference. Amen. Let's do this. Bard Gainsworth is playing that shit home like this. I see what you like about him. You, Bar Gainsworth, rock star. Consider this a friendly kidnapping. Everyone else, beat it! Okay, please, don't hurt anyone. We'll do whatever you say. Good boy, let's go. Give him one of those pills to calm him down. Manja, manja. Good boy. That'll make this easier. I'm Val. This is Mitzi and Carolyn. You're my date. That means Mitz off, Carolyn. We're a gang. Good show back there. Um, thanks? Just relax, bright boy. I've got a little driving to do. How about some mood music? That'll do. Uh, hey, if you think of anything else, you can give me a call, okay? You said they would mess I up. I said they'd fuck up. Not sure if this constitutes one of those. At least no one got killed this time. That we know of. Look, we still have a missing singer. Maybe a kidnapping, but honestly, with this crew, would not rule out a homicide. I don't think homicide. They wanted this guy for some reason. Ransom? I don't know. I don't think this band or their fans have any money. Damn right. Still no idea on the vehicles. By now, who knows how far these bitches might have gotten. APB's turned up nothing. But these girls are gonna cock up soon. And when they do... Right. Look, that was real smooth back there, but we can't keep pushing our luck. Pushing our luck? You're not going soft on me, are you? We had nothing to lose before, but look at us now. We're set now. We're set when I say we're set. What was in those pills? Beats us. It feels so good right now. Good right now. You bet your sweet ass. 
We need a no-tell motel and fast. My lover boy here is still in the mood. We should be at the border soon. Home free. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can wait. I'm down here, but I'm also up there. On the moon. So, Bard, how did you end up in that shithole back there? The label wants us to expand new territories. Last album didn't move enough units? The last album was good. I mean, it didn't do good. Some people just don't understand it yet. The general public has no taste. It's tough being a tortured artist. Right, girls? <laughs> you get me! The border! Oh, shit. And I think there's a motel up there, too. I hope they knock over every strip club in- uh, uh, Bienvenido a Mustel Paris. Oh. Vacancies, por favor? Uh, yes, ma'am. Furthest from the road. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, 144? Cash or credit? Cash. Remember we hadn't done talus for the room yet? Fresh towels? Okay. Thanks. And don't worry, I won't tell anyone about you guys. Wait a minute. Grab him. What do you mean you won't tell anyone? About what? I mean, I kind of know who you guys are. I read about you online. And of course I know who Bard Gainsworth is. Hi Bard. I'm a huge fan of the Christmas tits. It's just Christmas tits. No the. I just think you guys are cool. Well, you should have kept your mouth shut, you dumb shit. Now we gotta kill you. Wait, 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 wait. Let me just say to Bard, I was gonna come see your band, ma'am, but I'm stuck on this shift. It's really crazy, you know, nothing ever happens in this town. 18 years of living here, nothing. And then in one night, the two coolest things that have ever happened. The Christmas tits playing at Club Maldivore. just Christmas tits. No the. Christmas tits playing at Club Maldivore and Poltergasm playing the same night at Cafe Schwa, and I'm stuck here on this shit job. But then, the third coolest thing that's ever happened is you guys show up. You're all amazing. I love how you just don't give a fuck. Well, it's just great that we all have a fan club here, but you know who we are, and we can't just let you walk away from that. Look, just let me hang out with you guys for a little bit. You can, you can take me as a hostage. That's a terrible idea. Did you say Poltergasm was playing? Yeah. Uh, Poltergasm is actually my favorite band. No offense, Bart. Mine too. Ah, she's got the band pictures all over her locker at work. No dice, kid. We don't want or need an entourage. Check it out. I can get into the motel safe. We haven't done the deposit. All the receipts for the week are still in there. You can have those. Seriously, just, just let me hang out with you guys for like one night and then you can drop me off at the next town or whatever. No way. You know, I could get you the money. You could kidnap me, or... Shit. Are those drugs? Let me do some drugs with you. Take me to the next town and shoot me there. Just let me have one cool thing happen to me for once in my whole life. You're not really convincing me. I am gonna die in this shithole either way. Let me help you. That wouldn't be a terrible idea, having a hostage. 
If we got into any problems with Johnny Law, we can just use him as a human shield. Back to Poltergasm. They're playing this town? No, about 25 miles north, Cafe Schwa. You got a thing for this band, Mitzi? You know how you feel about Bard there? Xerox from Poltergasm is that guy for me since I was 13. But we should not be heading back north. Egghead here may have just talked himself into a stay of execution. Well, the show's probably over now anyway. Oh no, shows at Cafe Schwa always start super late. Look, I can take you girls there, and I know where all the cops have their speed traps. I can get you there and back here, no sweat. I know the back way into the club. I can be your tour guide and look out. We should probably just hold up here for the night. No way, sis. What are the goddamn chances our two favorite rock stars would be playing the same bumblefuck border town in the same night? It's kismet. This is just too crazy. There is no such thing as too crazy. Do you love him or not? Xerox Rhodesia? I mean, yeah, but that's celebrity worship. That's not the same thing as love. It's exactly the same. Val, no. Look, this thing is in your face right now. We could be dead tomorrow. Hostage. Let's go for a ride. So then, I dropped out of high school to take a job at the motel. I tried to do some online courses, but they were so boring. You seem to be an expert on boring. Uh, up to this stop sign and then take a right. Are we going back to the show? It's gonna be a show, all right. Stop and smile, crowd to welcome, both of dazzle! Extreme vans are doing for attention these days. <laughs> Xerox, hi. <laughs> Nobody. This isn't me. <sighs> it's all of these ladies. Ladies? Xerox Rhodesia. I want you to meet your biggest fan. M. M. Xerox. Uh, this is a rather strange introduction. You seem no stranger to strange. You're coming with us. The rest of you dorks, answer it! Well, I suppose I have no choice in the matter. You need to back the fuck up! I'm Bill! Okay, Bill. Uh, Twilight Zone. What TV show do you like? Fred Flintstone! Yeah, that's a good one. Look, Bill, the show's over. Show's over? Yeah, Bill. Exit's over there. Exit's over there! Yes, Bill. Okay, bye now! Got it handled? Handled. Are we done here? Yeah. 
Grab your boy and let's motor. I'm Mitzi. I'm sorry we fucked up your show. I wish I could have seen more of it. There will be other shows, I suppose. But, uh, if you don't murder us. I don't think they're gonna kill us, man. Hey, give them some of those drugs. Who's giving the orders here? Give them some of those drugs. Oh yeah, this is good stuff. I'll take your word for it. Hey, do you got any more of this? Shut the fuck up and navigate, nerd. I go bowling tomorrow! Thank you, miss. That'll be all. Thank you, sir. That is, that is all. That's all? Yes, sir. McMurphy, you got anything? Pro job, in and out, just like last time. But why would pros hang around the same place and commit two crimes like this in the same night? It's erratic, which may indicate a flaw in their methodology. Precisely, kid. That's what makes this gang so impossible to predict. Like all women, they're crazy as fuck. It flips my chitlin switch to call these whores pros when they're just doing typical, irrational, crazy, female bullshit. And we're standing here with our goddamn thumbs up our asses. I wonder what the next move will be. Entertainment enough? Go ahead and kill him. So the fantasy.
girls are zonked. If you want to get out of here, their keys are on the table. I don't think we're in any danger. I'm just saying, if you wanted to go, I can get you out of here. Are you in a hurry to leave? I don't know. I can't say I'm having a bad time. But listen, we do not want to be implicated in whatever shit these girls have been doing. As far as anybody else in the world knows, we're kidnap victims. As long as we can keep that story straight, maybe we have a chance to walk out of here. Provided we don't get killed first. That's a chance you take every time you walk across the street. What? Getting killed. Hey. Do you want a bagel? I love a bagel. Mm. We have some intel. It's about fucking time. We got nothing from the perimeter roadblock. Which means that either they snuck over the border before we had a chance to get into place, or they're masters of camouflage. Look at this. That's a hell of a rap sheet. Looks like they met up at Sandhurst, beat up a guard, and staged a daring daylight escape. Three girls, three hard luck stories. Washington, Melinda Starr, broken home, father in prison. She had a series of minor drug and weapons charges, petty larceny, receiving stolen goods, went to jail on aggravated assault, shot her boyfriend, apparent domestic situation, possibly some abuse at the hands of the boyfriend. He survives, presses charges, she gets locked up. Chandler, Mitzi Ann, only survivor of a drunk driving accident. Parents killed, grew up in an orphanage. String of minor shoplifting charges, vandalism, jailed for grand larceny. Broke into a cell phone store and stole $20,000 worth of phones and accessories. Hills, Carolyn Marie, long DSS sheet, real rough home situation, in and out of foster and treatment homes, ran away, hot wired a car, promptly drove it into a church. McMurphy, I think we can chalk all of this up to one thing. What's that? Daddy issues. You really think it's that simple? Daddy issues? Yep. Always is. Daddy-o. Daddy-o. Wake up, wake up. Rise and shine, sunshine. Chisana Kumanoko. Ladies! Up and at them. What time is it? Time doesn't matter. I'm still alive. I'm starving to death. We should get food and keep heading south. That's not the plan. There's a plan already? I've been thinking. This is the first time since I was a little girl that I've felt anything remotely resembling happiness. We've got the world on a charm bracelet, and these are the charms. I can't help but feel like Carolyn's getting the shit end of the stick. How do you mean? Who's your bard? Your Xerox. Well, it doesn't matter, okay? I'm fine. It's Danny Lucifer. Is that right? I mean, yeah. But it's time But like... nothing. It's time we 86 Goober Patrol over here and got you with the program. Well, I mean, it's not like Danny Lucifer is gonna be just up the road like these guys were. Do you know that? No. But I don't- But nothing. We're all equals here. What are you even fucking talking about? Cool loot for equal work. Carolyn deserves just as much as us. 
and we're on a mission now. Find Danny Lucifer. Oh, well, this is dumb. Love is not dumb. Love? What are you even fucking talking about? Are you still high? You'll thank me for this. Val, you really shouldn't push this. We really should just keep heading south. I didn't request your input, Mitzi. This is fucking crazy. Nothing is crazy! Val. Where the hell are you going? To the car. To get my fucking purse. Is that okay? Alright. Alright. So then I got really into this guy, Unamuno. He basically said that what makes us human is the fact that we suffer. So if you turn away from suffering, you turn away from being human. Ugh, what a grotesque philosophy. I know. <laughs> it really resonated with me. I like John Stuart Mill. He said that we are essentially free to do whatever gives us pleasure so long as it doesn't bring harm or hurt anyone else. Sounds like Crowley. Do what thou wilt. Uh, sort of. But Crowley leaves out the part about not hurting anyone. Kind of like our hosts here. I have his home address. Who? Danny Lucifer. How'd you get his address? I walked to the payphone and called information. Val, it's northwest of here, about eight hours. We'd be going back over the border. All right, troops, grab your gear and get ready. Just think this through. This is a bad idea. I've thought it through. It's a great idea. It's a huge risk. People know who we are now. Are we famous? Every man and woman is a star for 15 minutes. Alistair Warhol? What makes you think anyone knows who we are? Well, remember the clerk, he read about us. Oh yeah, everybody loves you Shut guys. Shut up, fuck face. Now. Do we shoot you or tie you up and dump you out in the desert? I realize, Carolyn, you may have grown somewhat attached in your drug stupor. I, I vote for the plan where you don't kill me. And we're not going to kill you. Are we, Val? Whatever. But we're ditching him. Going north will be suicide, Val. Get real. Fuck reality. I'm following a higher calling here. And you do well to appreciate who I'm doing this for. Come on, we can at least take him so far as Danny Lucifer's house, right? I fucking love Danny Lucifer. Me too! <gasps> oh, for fuck's sake. He's been a good hostage all along, Val. And besides, we could still use him as a human shield that we talked about for when we go back over the border. You guys are bound and determined to fuck up my great idea. Please and thank you. Fucking fine. Everybody get ready. Cannon? Get ready. We got a break. What do you got, McMurphy? We got our guys to try to run to see if there's any credit card or cell phones in the girls' names. Got nothing. We did note that Mitzi Chandler's cell phone service was on a family plan. So we ran that to see if there's any possible family members that we could possibly interview. And? And, turns out, the ping that we got came from across the border. Same place where our rock stars got abducted, Family going home for a visit. Or, she has two phones. What kind of a lunatic would have two phones? Either way, it's a definite hit on our fugitives. So we call in the State Department. <laughs> nope. Here's the good part. The first phone ping that we got came from across the border. That was a couple hours ago. A couple of hours ago? Why in the, the hell am I just hearing about this? ping that we got came just a couple minutes ago. That was Northwest back in the States. Back in the States? Hot damn old ride. Saddle up. Let's go get them. Oh. 
so you just scared the guy. Relax, funny face. There's just a warning shot over his head, one to knock out the phone, and one to empty out the register. I tied him up while Carolyn pumped the gas. <laughs> no, he's not going so far as to equate crime and art. Well, although you could make that argument. I'm just saying that if your art isn't destroying your life, then maybe you're not arting hard enough. All the good poetry's already been written. Well, what about your songs? Bart, how does it feel to be famous? Famous kidnaps we can No, baby doll. Before that, a famous rock star. Not a rock star. What about you, Xerox? Are you a rock star? Find the term to stay. Isn't this a hoot? We have the two best rock stars on the planet in this stolen car, and neither one of them thinks that they're actually rock stars. I hope Danny Lucifer's more honest than these guys. Hey, fart face. How does it feel to be a nobody? Oh, wait. Don't bore me with your answer. The body count continues. Well, we're headed in the right direction. We just need Chandler to keep checking that phone. And then we zero in and make examples of these sorry ass lags. It's not just them we're up against, you know. It's a whole culture that sees these bitches as some kind of folk heroes. Half of our already difficult job is to expose them for what they are. Do you really think that people are going to see these girls as heroes, given all the lives they destroyed? Wholesale murder, kidnapping, armed robbery, families torn apart. It'd be a different story if they were men. It really would. But they are not men. They are girls. Very bad, bad, bad. Girls, 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 girls. What's the worst thing you've ever done? Besides my last album? No, really. The worst thing. Like, I don't mean from society's perspective, but your own. For example, I don't consider shooting the owner of a strip club or a drug dealer as bad. Maybe society wouldn't either, but personally, the worst thing I've ever done, I know what that is. Well, when I was 13, before I ran away, my mom had this boyfriend named Buddy. I didn't like him, but I guess he was nice to my mom. Anyway, so Buddy got this good job out of state and my mom wanted to move us out there. I had a boyfriend at the time, Tommy. He was my first real boyfriend and I didn't want to leave him. So I gave Tommy a hand job and used a pair of old panties to wipe everything up. I threw the dirty panties in the back of Buddy's car and told my mom that I'd seen him parked making out in the back seat with Brenda Donaldson. She was this girl from school that I hated. Mom didn't believe it at first until she found the panties. Holy shit, Belle. Yeah. Needless to say, they broke up, but Mom was trying to call the cops on Buddy because Brenda was my age, and so he had to get out of town right away. And then Brenda even got taken out of school over it. Later, I realized that I had ruined my mother from ever being able to love another person again. Like, ever.
then Tommy dumped me. Sounds like you deserved his shit. He didn't dump me over that, though. He dumped me because he found some other girl who would blow him. You should have appreciated those hand jobs. Zip it, dickless. <laughs> You're talking about the worst thing you ever did? Val, you've done ten things worse than that in the last day. Then what about you? Hmm? What's the worst thing you ever did? I don't know. I have to think about it. Let someone else go first. I'll go. When I was a kid, I went to this private Catholic school. Ooh, a good Catholic boy. Ex-Catholic. Anyway, I went to the school and one year there was a new kid, Arthur Squint. Arthur was a black kid, the only black kid in school, maybe the only black kid that had ever gone there. I don't know. Anyway, I was happy that Arthur was there because until he showed up, I was kind of the number one most outcast picked on kid. We would talk to each other on the playground at recess because we sort of had that in common. One day the popular kids started picking on me worse than ever before. It was because I'd been nice to Arthur. He started shoving me, and calling me names, calling me in lover. You can say the N word in this car. They were shoving me and calling me names and I don't know if I was scared to get beat up, but in retrospect, I think that I just wanted the popular kids to like me. So I said, I'll show you. And I went over to where Arthur was sitting, reading his book, and I punched him in the face as hard as I could. I don't think it hurt him much physically, but I broke his glasses. And I just remember standing there and staring at those broken glasses on the ground and feeling the most horrible sadness. All the other kids just laughed. Arthur didn't cry. He just stood up and picked up his glasses and walked away without saying a word. I waited until I got home to cry and then I cried and bawled my eyes out. His parents took him out of school the next day. Yeah. And I went right back to being the number one outcast. Nothing had changed. Children are extremely cool. But I shouldn't have been one of them. I think about that kid in those stupid broken glasses almost every day. But you realize you're wrong, and you're a better person for it. You can't beat yourself up forever, Bart. Brad. My real name is Brad. God damn it! Motherfucker! What? The Motherfucker! This asshole is cruising in the left lane. What? The left lane is for fucking passing, and this idiot is just cruising it under the speed limit. The left lane is for fucking passing! Jesus fuck, Val! What? The guy was slowing us down. You're the one wanting us to get to Danny Lucifer's quick time so we could get back over the border. God damn it, Val. You're the only one who cares about this Danny Lucifer fool's errand, and we won't even make it there with the attention you just drew. Carolyn, you want to see Danny Lucifer, right? Look. We are this close to having everything on our terms. Maybe we are, but dumb shit like that is gonna fuck it up 100%. Driving 50 miles an hour behind some dipshit is gonna fuck us up 100%. For fuck's sake, Val. There are other cars on the road. People have cell phones. So? We're gonna be reported. We're not exactly nondescript. We're fucked now. Okay. Okay. Calm your tits. We'll get a new set of wheels. We've been in this sweet ride too long anyhow. We've only got an hour left. Everybody, take a pill, relax. I'll pull us off the next exit. Yeah. Talk to me. Uh-huh. Tag. Where? Thank you. Hey, we got a break. Let's hear it. All right. Highway road rage incident called in by a motorist. The driver was killed by gunfire. Motorist got the tag number of the assailant, the same number that matches the vehicle that's tied with a couple of dead bodies we found in the woods. That's 10 miles away from the club that the girls ran. Our girls 
There's no doubt in my mind. Let's go. All right, we'll put out an APB. Maybe we'll get lucky with the girls home again. We've got this wrapped up like the old fish. So, the worst thing I ever did was pretty dumb, but I still feel bad about it. I was in this shitty foster home with this creepy, gross family. So I decided to steal a car and run away. So I find an unlocked car, and the keys are up in the visor, just like in the movies. Who does that? Anyway, so I steal the car, but I didn't really know how to drive. Uh, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was, so I didn't get very far. I kind of destroyed a church on accident. I mean, I hate religion. And I wouldn't feel so bad about it if I'd meant to. But this was some poor people's church, and I wrecked it. Totally. Like they couldn't have fixed it, even if they had the money. The judge made me apologize to some people from the church, and they weren't even mad about it, because they were church people. They just looked at me like, okay. Maybe that's why I get so fucked up now. Bingo. Everybody, get in. This car sucks. Only old people and cops drive Lincolns. You're the one wanting us to keep a low profile. Doesn't get any lower than this. This is all gonna be worth it. Carolyn, get ready to meet your destiny. When we find Danny Lucifer, you'll forget all about that stupid poor people's church. Get us the fuck out of this parking lot. Bard, how you feeling? You need a bump? Some more drugs? You feeling good? I'm good. Xerox, you okay? Fresh as a daisy. Can we leave that clerk here? Val, no! You promised we'd take him to see Danny Lucifer's house. I never promised anything. Some of you assume a lot. Fine. Mitzi, can we just fucking go, please? You all. Yeah, I ended up fucking all three of them at once. By the time the sun came up, they were begging me to stop. <laughs> ah. All right, Cannon. I know this is gonna flip your chitlin switch, but there's there's no sign of the girl. Shit. Parking lot phone ping checks out. Here's our stolen car, though. We're almost there. Where is there? Our suspect. Yes. But where is there? What do you mean? I mean. Why would these girls come all the way out here when they were already scot-free across the border? They're not going home. They're not heading for any major city, we can tell. There has to be something so delicious out here that they can't resist. But what is it? Something to do with the rock stars? The rock stars. Maybe they're headed to the West Coast, going to Rob the rock star's house or hole up no, there? No, not those rock stars. There are three girls. The pattern could suggest a third kidnapping. Call it a hunt. But get on the horn and find out if there are any famous or semi-famous or even totally washed up musicians living within a hundred mile radius of this area. Xerox, do you have one? Worst thing you ever did? The worst thing I ever did? I was in college and I had this roommate, Woody. Yeah, he, uh, he turned me on to dope. I was a babe in the woods. 
And this guy, he was full on dealing. Woody had this hot girlfriend. He's a hardcore junkie. And one day she came over looking for him. I guess he was out selling, but I invited her in. She asked if I wanted to get high. And I wasn't hooked or anything, but she was real cute. So I said, okay. Anyway, she meant, do I want to get high off of Woody Stash? And I knew it was a bad idea, but she came back into the room with stuff she'd snatched from his uh, hiding place. As we got settled in, she kind of nuzzled up to me. And it felt really good. So I went with it. And pretty soon we were making out. And then pretty soon we were going all the way, full on. I don't know what happened, but while we were doing it, she kind of died. She OD'd, she, her body started to shake and I didn't, I thought she was coming, but she wasn't, she was dying. And so I stopped. I mean, I didn't, I didn't finish. But then I didn't know what the hell to do. And I really liked Woody. And I knew he loved this girl. And I didn't know if he'd be more mad at her dying, or me fucking her, or the fact that we stole his dope. I wrapped her up, drove her body to a drainage ditch, shoved her in. And then I tore the house apart to make it seem like someone had robbed the place. They never found the girl. But weeks after, she went missing. But he showed me the engagement ring that he was planning to give her. That's it. A lot of your songs make a whole lot more sense now. That was a long time ago, man. Yeah. I kind of forgot about it. I have one. Nobody I cares, dickass. Fresh baby lamb chops, both after a rain, and the last one is citrus. <laughs> This is the place. This doesn't look like Danny Lucifer's house. Have you ever seen Danny Lucifer's house before? No. Then how do you know? This is the address you gave me. If we just drove eight hours for nothing. If we drove eight hours for nothing, it'll be your fault. This again? Shut the fuck up. And look, on the porch. <laughs> okay, Christ. What do we do now? Go in with guns a blazing? Let's just ring the doorbell. You want to just go up and ring the doorbell, like Avon calling. We could just go up and ring the doorbell. Okay, let's just go up and ring the doorbell. Danny Lucifer's fucking doorbell. Maybe he's at band practice. Or maybe he's on tour. We have no fucking idea. We drove all this way. Danny Lucifer, we're home. Xerox, look at this. 
This is truly magnificent. I fucking love this guy. I hope he is on tour so we can just squat this place for a month. So what do we do now? He's not here. I say we take all the valuables we can and hump it due south. We can't take Danny Lucifer's stuff. We shouldn't even be touching it. We're staying here until Danny Lucifer gets God back. damn it, Val. This fucking obsession that you Shut have- Shut up, Mitzi. Your selfishness ends here. My selfishness? <laughs> We're all along on your ride. This is the Val show all the way. You say you're doing this for Carolyn? She doesn't give have a shit. Have you ever even bothered to ask me what my- Got us out of the joint. We started with one gun and a pack that we'd make a whole new world for ourselves knowing full well the risk. Yeah, well we might have beat the odds, but you keep moving the goalposts. I was happy when the world we made for ourselves was a duffel bag full of money and drugs. The duffel bag. Carolyn, where the fuck is the duffel bag? Shit, I think I left it in the car. Don't let it out of your sight. Go get it. Money and drugs, Mitzi? Those would run out fast. Look at what fate brought us. Don't you see what God or whatever wants for us? It's this. Love is not kidnapping the posters from your bedroom wall and drugging them into liking you. They're not on drugs now. Your fucking problem is that you don't believe in anything. The you cops are here. What? How many? I think just one. We need the guns from the trunk. Looks like there's just one. <sighs> Mr. Lucifer, we had another report of fireworks being discharged. before more cops show up. I'm gonna run outside and create a distraction while you guys try and find a back way out. No, brother Steve, don't. All right, pizza face. You go out the front, we'll go out the back. I'm coming out. It's me, Darwin. I'm coming out. Told he just killed an armed man. Oh God, Rusty! Shoot that one, you dumb shit! No, 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 no! Wait, wait, wait! Don't, don't, don't! You don't hesitate with these bitches. Look, I will be okay. <laughs> Hell no! Good 
Godspeed, but Murphy. Fucking pig! What's the EG on backup? Still about eight minutes. I got eight minutes. We have you surrounded. Release your hostages. Could you repeat that louder? I can't hear you. I snatch, pig! You'll never take us alive! Carolyn's dead, and now we're on a fucking suicide mission. You want to walk out that door? Go right ahead. I still can't hear you, Mitzi and Chandler. I'm going to call you on your cell phone to discuss the release of your hostages. <laughs> what phone, dumbass? You have another fucking phone? It's an emergency backup. You let them right to us. about my roommate's girlfriend and the dope? Yeah. I made that up. I do. Xerox, I'm so sorry. I really do love you. This is my fault. No, no. It's not your fault. This is the worst thing I've ever done. Mitzi. Mitzi! about your hostages. You can kill them or let them walk, but I can promise you, 
you won't be walking out of this. Ah, I caught him! I got you, didn't I, asshole? I still can't hear you. Come out and face me like a man. One of these two maniacs is gonna get us killed. The back isn't being covered right now. I think we can get out. to my house. 